We now go into game one of the StarCraft World Championship Series Global Finals. Introducing our first player in the bottom left, in the blue, make some noise for Stats! And his opponent in the upper right, the non-Korean Cope, he is Cyril! Such an epic moment. I don't know if I was ready for this, Tasteless, but now that it's here, I cannot wait to see how it goes down. We are starting off on Blue Shift, and already we've had a little bit of player interaction with Stats forcing that natural expansion to go towards the third base. That's right, with that probe coming out there, he's able to block that hatchery that forces Cyril to set his hatchery up somewhere else. This gives Protoss a little bit of control early on in the game. It's certainly not something Cyril uh, is going to have a trouble with. No, it's something that he does run into. Protoss has loved to do this, but he's got to be careful as well. This can set up little areas where stats can show some extra aggression. If your creep spread is a little bit slower, maybe his initial adepts can do some damage. Maybe can pick off some drones. And at this level, any damage you do early on really can snowball. So let's keep in mind, there's a reason why we don't let these players play one game to decide who's the best. It's a best of seven because there are so many different strategies in StarCraft. There are so many different ways to play the game. Uh, you have to have, be prepared on every single map in every single situation. And of course, in a series like this, mm. you can farm data from your opponent. You see how they play in game one and game two. Maybe you'd use something new there and incorporate that to try to counter them. So there's going to be a lot of planning here, a lot of mind games throughout this series. Yeah, mind games, you say, Tasteless. Well, already. Stats has a proxy pilot. It looks like probably a Stargate going to be going down here. And this is not very common from Stats. He likes to be the defender. He likes to absorb your attacks. But Cyril is too good to just play textbook against, and he is going for some early aggression. Yeah, Stats is known for being an incredibly conservative player. He actually wants the game to go uh, pretty long. If he can get all the tech he needs, he usually has an answer for everything and anything. But Stats opening up with a little bit of aggression here, having that Stargate over there allows oracles for instance to get inside the main base and kill workers a little bit more quickly and look at this he's already bullying back some scouting lings out on the map really nicely done by sats he's trying to just keep Cyril busy pick up anything he can because if that oracle gets into the main base undefended it can do massive damage we see that uh, that adept is going to be coming up here right now now the queen here is to try to deflect it acts as a deterrent to keep the adepts from getting too far forward, but Stats will go ahead and try to shade in here. Now, especially at this level, even if you can get a few drone kills, mm -hmm. it can add up to a lot. Oh my gosh, Cyril got a Zergling into Stats' base. He's scouting around, but doesn't see anything. This should tell him that there's something out on the map. Is he gonna be able to defend it in time, though? These links are gonna come up here now. The Adepts have shaded away, and here comes that Oracle. Now, this is really what we wanna watch for. How many kills can this Oracle get? Yeah, it is very important right now. This is where the big damage can be done. Instantly pulls his drone. Cyril trying to evacuate this area, losing just one drone so far. A second one, a third one goes down, and Stats continues his harassment. Okay, this is an incredible amount of damage. It looks like he will actually get six before the Oracle oh. has to run away, and it will not be killed off. Meanwhile, a counterattack down here by Cyril trying to break through. In fact, it's not properly walled off. The links do th slip through. Yeah, he does have a little bit of a flank. Looks like he might pick that off, and in fact, he does surround that a depth one. Once again, Stats trying to get a full wall. He does, but there are four lings in his base. The probes have been pulled. They're going to have to be used to try to take out these Zerglings as this wall in is going to continue to be set up. There are more lings on the way, however, and Stats is scrambling to try to get some proper defense. Oh, my gosh. That pylon might go down with more speed lings coming down. Cyril putting on a huge amount of pressure, and here he goes. He's breached the main base. He's going to be going in here for some probe kills. He needs to try to balance out the damage that Stats has already done to him. Oh, it looks like these Oracles might have gotten recalled to deal with these Zerglings. He's going to chase them around. Great micro by Sarah, trying to use up as much of the Oracle energy as possible. The Lings now hitting the pylon. The wall will be breached once again. Another pylon goes down to try to sandbag the attack. The Oracle, meanwhile, is going to clean up the rest of the Zerglings inside of the main. Wow, Sarah has really made something happen here after taking that devastating attack from the Oracle, keeping them busy right now, scouting out everything Stats is doing, breaking his wall multiple times. Some beautiful play from our Finnish Zerg. 
And from here on out, these things are going to be used more to try to spot and see what else is being built here in the main. There's not going to be too much more damage here. Behind this, though, Stats is getting three more gateways. He's getting a Templar Archives, and he's upgrading Zelt Legs. We have a Warp Prism coming out here as well. He can use that to start mm -hmm. to try to harass the Zerg and control him a little bit. Yeah, this is a very common play, but he's adding some more gateways as well. It will be some Archon Drop aggression along with some charged zealots. If Serral does not defend against this perfectly, it could really set him behind. Now these two oracles are going to come in here, try to get a few more kills. You can one-shot drones with two oracles, although it looks like the targeting was a little bit um, off sync there mm. for stats. And so he doesn't get the same drone kills uh, he was probably hoping to get. But this attack coming here from stats, this is going to be really powerful. He's going to warp Archons over here. And these are great with a warp prism because mm -hmm. an Archon is almost entirely shields. Shields, of course, regenerate. So the fact that he can come in here, try to do damage, the moment the Archon gets weak, he picks it back up, mm -hmm. backs off. Usually the Protoss trades very effectively, but we already see Serral spotting this with his Ling, so he's going to get ready and brace for impact. That's right. He sees an Archon drop is coming, but does he know about the Charged Zealots that could be warped in? We're going to see in a moment here. Stats already starting this harassment, picking off a Creep Tumor, moving forward, but that's enough Roaches that I don't think Serral's too afraid right now. Okay, the War Prism's going to be coming up. Being escorted by this small air army is going to be key. We don't have the Zealots coming in here as an attack just yet. Now the Warpin is going to come, mm. which means that Stats is committed to this area. Don't forget, there's two Oracles in here as well, turning on their beams, going forward. The Phoenix gets a lift as well. A charge in by these Zealots, but it looks like Serral is going to hold tight. Serral holds it so easily. That did absolutely nothing but bruise a few of the Roaches and he's going to have to retreat. Now look at the supplies here. It's about 120, 270. I have to imagine that Cyril is itching to counterattack across the map mm. and try to deny that third base. In fact, can we get a, can we get a shot of the third base really quickly here? Uh, okay, there, it has been spotted. There is a Ling hitting it, but this harass is going to continue. Yeah, but he's got to be careful. If he loses that War Prism, he is going to be just about dead. But look at this. I am loving what we're seeing from Serral. He's adding that Infestation Pit, and that is going to allow him to get into Swarm Host play against the stats that he knows has to be going for Immortals. So some sm a small number of Roaches come down here. He wants to see if there's anything stray that he can try to pick off. Of course, the Immortal immediately counters the Roach. And he, he's got to be careful because with these sentries here, if the right force fields mm. get up, he's going to get cornered and basically wiped out. So an immediate turnaround here from Serral. He goes in here and takes out actually all three of those sentries. Beautiful play. Yeah, you know, those Roaches were going to die anyways because of the force fields, like you said. So to turn them around and still gain that value to knock out those high gas costing units was a good solid move from Serral. Okay, we have five Swarm Hosts close to coming out here. Again, I don't know if Stats is going to be totally prepared for this. This is not what a normal ZVP looks like. And some of this may be because these players have to play a series of games. So mm. you definitely want to mix up your strategy so you can be unpredictable. Yeah, you know, the Swarm Hosts are deadly indeed, but Stats has a strong army already. If he can avoid fighting against those Locusts, if he can walk around the Swarm Hosts when they are not ready to shoot again, that's where Stats might be able to actually endanger Serral's lead. Yeah, we see this with certain sets of units. Broodlords is another one where uh, sometimes the best way to deal with them is to actually avoid them entirely and mm. attack wherever they're not. Um, but for right now, it seems like Stats is just staying back at home, which could put him in trouble depending on where these Locusts start to hit. And we see it right there uh, for a moment. His first person view moving so quickly through here, rotating through everything, making sure his macro is on key. Just such a quick player and immediately reacting to this Roach attack. Okay, so these Roaches are really more to keep the Protoss occupied. If he can get any kills here on these workers, that's ideal. But Serral knows this can't really do that much. However, keeping the Protoss pinned back at home is going to allow Serral to set up a pretty good position here on the minimap. We see this happening right here, right now. Oh. Oh, a very good move. Those Locusts are close. Stats is going to have a hard time against this. The Roach is coming in as well. Those are not the scary things, though. These Locusts diving in, attacking onto the Zods and Immortals, but it looks like Stats will deal with this just fine. Okay, some force fields do come down here. He needs to try to retreat until there's more Locusts ready to fire. Stats is in pursuit here, going to try to chase this down as much as he can. Oh, he's chasing it right now. Some beautiful juggling with that War Prism, popping in and out these damage units. But Serral, he's microing backwards. He's waiting for another charge on these Swarmos. And when that's up, he is going to be ready to fight again. 
It looks like these rocks are going to be torn down. Sarah wants to have the right position set up. He wants to have proper circulation here on the map. Is Stats overextending? We already see that Cyril is basically maxed out. And here's where Cyril is eager to pounce. He's going to come forward. He takes out another sentry. And now he's going to try to get these immortals here oh. that are straying in the end. Oh, some great micro there by Stats. He's juggling back the immortals before they take any critical damage. But the swarm elves are coming up as well. He warps in some more zealots. Oh, some nice files coming out right now from Cyril. And look at those locusts coming coming in to pin him. The Locusts are moving in right now. Stats is going to back up, trying to get in between this Nexus, and as those come down, Storms blanket the area. All that Stats has right now is these Immortals and Archons. Well, the Immortals certainly still powerful indeed, so Serral turns around and waits for these Swarm Hosts to recharge, but he is going to lose some Queens on running away. As you can see, Stats has managed to push this back just slightly. Now, what's most important for Stats is dragging this game out. Cyril has a lot of leverage for the time being, but if Stats can hang on, if he can continue to tech up, he will certainly have a solution to what's been presented to him. Yeah, you're very right about that. Stats is so good at getting into the late game, having the right compositions, hitting the right attacks, countering what the Zerg is doing. But Serral's mixing up once again, getting some Banelink speed to go with this. That's going to be really interesting when that finishes. Okay, we see the Roaches once again pursuing. Remember, the uh, Warpers, we can only pick up so much, and a beautiful surround. These Immortals are so precious right now for Stats. It's the only real answer he has for all of these Roaches. Oh, and he loses a lot of them. The Archon falling there as well. Only a few left. Two more do pop out. Some high is coming down, he needs those storms, and he does have them. Okay, we see the Locust coming in here. He's actually managed to separate the army here from the second base as well. So much damage coming down. Stats trying his best to stay in control, but only four Immortals remain. Oh my god, Stats juggling his heart out right now, warping in more units, flanking on these Ravagers. Did Serral commit too much here? Stats somehow keeping four Immortals alive. I don't know how Stats is managing to last this long. We see the Nexus here in the upper left. There's nothing there to defend, and Stats is actually going to try to chase this. Oh, I don't know if chasing this is the right plan, but every time they shoot those locusts out, you have to be ready to do something against the Zerg player because oh, when man. they're back, you're in trouble. We saw a spire being made. He could absolutely suddenly erupt with a bunch of mutalists mm. and completely blindside stats. But in this game, he might not even need that. We see stats just barely hanging on, trying to keep control of his side of the map. Oh, no. Another set of locusts dive in. A ton of damage done to stats' army. It's almost gone right now. Serral pushing through. Looking for a victory in game number one. You can see the attack continuing to come forward. He's banging at the gates of Stats' second base. There is so much over here. The core goes down. Oh, he breaks through there. But really, we need a lot more units from Stats if he is to hold on. Some great side storms going out. But GG, Serral takes game number one. It's happening. Just fantastic play here out of Serral. I can't believe this. So impressive. Game number one, we saw a very interesting time in attack with those swarm hosts. Stats was defending pretty well, but mm. ultimately, the trading was too efficient there. I mean, the Locusts are, of course, yeah. free. The Immortals and Archons are very strong, but if you're not able to get to those Locusts and deny them, and you're unable to do some kind of counterattack where the Locusts can't be utilized in defense, you're going to be in trouble. Brilliantly done. It really was, and what a great counter after the early damage that Stats achieved to get in there with the first Oracle and get six kills at a time where you normally get two. That was fantastic, but the Ling counterattack from Serral, you know, the fact that he held off that charge lot warping in his main base as well, it all just paved his path for this Swarmos play, and he just did it so efficiently. I'm very curious to see now what Stats is going to do in game number two. He did open with that proxy oracle. It wasn't too impactful, but a lot of times looking at how a game starts out can give us a good idea of you know what they will be planning in the next few games. Of course, I don't think Serral is going to be doing that strategy, by the way, um, several more times in the series. He yeah, may pull it out again. We did see TY try the same <laughs> strategy three times in a best of five, which is very unorthodox. Uh, anyways, we're now going into game two. Let's get hype. Let's make some noise. Stats versus Serral is underway. Introducing our first player with the pride of Korea on the line. In the upper right, in the blue, he is Stats! In the bottom left, in the red, the non-Korean hope, 
He is Cyril! Stats definitely has to be on his back foot after that game. Number one, it was a nice opening, but Cyril instantly punishing every mistake Stats made. But you know what? If there is a Protoss on the planet Earth that can come back from that stronger in game number two, it has to be this man, the ultimate defensive Protoss. Okay, similar to game number one, we saw that the probe was sent out to try to interfere with the hatchery being planted at the second base. Uh, so the hatchery is going to be put in what would normally be the third base location. Again, this is not something unusual that pro gamers don't have to deal with, but it's just important to note how exactly Sterl wants to try, excuse me, Stats wants to try to dictate this game. And I wonder if he's going to try anything like that previous game. You know, he hid that Stargate out there. That's that's kind of a strategy you might use once or twice maximum in a best of seven because your opponent is going to be really on the lookout for it due to the high damage output it has. But the fact that he used it in game one, it got its damage, he still lost. What do you do? Do you pull back and play a more conservative Stargate in your main base? I, I think the answer is actually yes. I think you really do want to try to play a slower game here if your stats, because even though stats got in there and did some damage, I think Cyril handled it so well. Mm. If you play conservative, it's a little bit harder to crack you. Um, now here from Cyril, I don't really know what he's going to be planning here either. I mean, one thing about both of these players is that they really can play the full range, although they do both tend to lean towards uh, more late mm. game stuff. Yeah, and that's always an interesting matchup to see, right? Because who is going to play a little bit differently? Who's going to be the, the initial aggressor in this matchup? I feel like overall it should be stats throughout the series, right? If you let Serral go without any pressure on him, he is going to get an unbeatable late game army. This is one of the fascinating things about Serral is he is so hard for players to control. He really does just react to everything properly. When the dust settles, he's always uh, either ahead by a lot or by enough that he can then start to leverage his position. And then if you're too passive against Serral, he simply outgrows you. Yeah, it, it, it's quite a conundrum to take him out, but Stats is going for what you suggested here, Tasteless. He's going for a more conservative play. The Stargate is in his main base, uh, but that doesn't tell us the whole story. We're gonna have to see what units he makes, what tech does he add on afterwards. Okay, we're waiting to see what's gonna come out of that Stargate. It is gonna be an Oracle. All par for the course right now in the current meta of StarCraft II in 2018. The Oracle has a lot of different purposes. A lot of times we'll see it go in there and try to kill workers, but you can also tag the opposing army and monitor their movement that way uh, or use it as a detector. So um, it's a great unit to start things off, and it doesn't really tell us what mm. kind of uh, mainline strategy Stats is doing so far. This can lead into so many different things. Yeah, very, very true there. Now, oh no, Stats instantly losing his two first adepts. Normally, if you lose those, you really want to be killing drones, not just picking off a few Zerglings. So already kind of a bumpy start for Stats, but definitely not something that is game-ending. I do worry that that might actually indicate the stress that Stats is under to lose something like that right away. Mm -hmm. We see the Oracle coming in here. It does take a little bit of damage, only killing two drones, which is pretty standard mm -hmm. as far as the numbers go. Cyril, similar to game one, looks to try to come in here and penetrate <laughs> um, this second base and do some damage, but you can see Stats is adjusted and is ready for something like that. Yeah, he is very ready, and Cyril pulls back, realizing that such is the case. Now, uh, the Overlord is scouting what's going on. It sees the additional gateways. It sees the Phoenix. Looking at this right now, everything looks pretty standard from Stats. I think he's going to go for a third base. We see these Oracles coming up now, looking to try to come in here and take out some drones. Now, again, two Oracles can one-shot a drone. The drones scramble to get away. We can see some more damage coming down here, and the Oracle's Whoa. on the run, and it goes down! Yeah, three drone kills, four drone kills maybe with these adepts in the natural. Okay, now he's starting to pull something together here. Stats attacking that economy of Serral, but I gotta say, Serral's defense is still very strong. You know, you gotta watch out when you do these kind of moves as Protoss. Sometimes you can't get the third base. Even though you did damage, you mm -hmm. don't have anything to defend back at home. <gasps> um, we also have two Robos being made here, Otosis. Yeah. Two Robos right now. This is a little bit uncommon. Normally, you'll see that third Nexus before that. Okay, here is the third Nexus. Maybe that was a little bit late, like you said. You know, he didn't have units at home to defend. So maybe not that weird here from Stats. 
Okay, so with the two Robos, he can definitely get uh, a lot of Immortals, for instance, which is going to keep him very safe against anything Roach-related. Let's not forget how uh, Stats lost mm. Game 1. I mean, he got uh, outpowered there with so many Roaches and Ravagers and uh, Swarm Hosts as well that there was no option for Stats mm. to move the game into late game. Yeah, now Stats is trying to set up a late game while continuing harassment. He has a bunch of adepts out here right now, but Serral sees everything coming. His creep spread is already phenomenal for this early into the game. He's really covered a lot of the map, so it's going to be hard for Stats to get in and get damage. But to be fair, he made a quick warp prism. That's true. Now, the Warp Prism is one way that you can stay back at home and be safe defending, but you can come out on the map and start to do Warp Pins here and there and try to do some damage. But you have to be careful. This can be a double-edged sword. If you overextend, uh, if you start to hemorrhage too many units and you're not doing anything, then the Zerg ends up mm. getting ahead anyways. That is very true. Now, Serral balancing his roaches, balancing his drones. He realizes after seeing that Warp Prism, he does need some defense out here. Now, the Phoenix pushing back Overlord so he can try to get in here and drop, but already roaches are awaiting these adepts. He runs in, takes some damage on him, picks off a couple drones, and turns around. Stats is just relentless with his harassment this game. Okay, the Lings have been chased out. Cyril using these links to basically monitor the movement here of stats to keep stats uncomfortable. Let's not forget that the three sentries that we see here, those were assassinated in the last game mm -hmm. uh, with a really nice move there from Cyril. And those sentries are really integral to actually defending yeah. a lot of what the Zerg is going to throw at you. You want to try to abuse the surface area as much as possible to limit how much damage you're going to be receiving. And you know what, Tasteless? I think there's a decent possibility we're going to see Stats hit a very sharp timing attack. He's adding five gateways. You know, his plus one his charge is going to be done. He already has the War Prism. He's making Immortals two at a time. I mean, he might be able to push out and maybe deny that fourth base or something. Okay, we've got five more gates coming, as you said, Artosis, and I think this is a really smart way to play this. I think that Stats is trying at his best to adjust from what happened in the last game. He wants to actually do a little bit more uh, of seizing the game and trying to control what his opponent's up to. Yeah, trying to pick off these Zerglings that are keeping tabs on him. Of course, Serral never stops scouting. An Overseer going through into the main base of Stats. He's going to see some additional gateways, not the best uh, saturation here on the main base, meaning where are those probes exactly? And he is starting to make a lot of units against us. So Serral preparing for this little push. Now, Zealot uh, Legs, Ze Zealot Charge, excuse me, is going to be finishing up here, which is going to give him a lot more muscle. You see those links trying to counterattack to see if he can maybe draw that army back. Um, and Stats is going to come back here. It's, of course, not clear for Stats. And, mm. you know, StarCraft is a game of incomplete information. You don't always know what's out on mm. the map. So he is afraid of a much larger counterattack. But actually, Serral has pretty much the bare minimum out on the map. Yeah. So really, all Serral has to do is be ready for this huge attack. And it's going to be pretty tough, even for Serral, to try to hold this when this does come, because he's getting so many Immortals, he's getting Storm, he's going to have a very solid mm. army. And this is really where Stats begins to shine. If you give him all the units, all the tech, all the upgrades, there's mm. almost nobody better than him as Protoss. Well, it seems like right now he's just kind of sharking around the map, you know? He's got his units out, it's keeping some pressure on Serral, but Serral's realizing, okay, this attack is actually not coming right now. He's setting up his own attack. We see Serral's first-person view here. He's getting some drop overlords into position coming over here checking on a fourth no fourth yet is going to deny it for the time being but this is where we get to see how good is stats's defense on multiple fronts because there is going to be attacks going after the third and the main yeah it looks like Serral's going to be the first one to truly initiate uh, this is more of an old school style of playing, doing the mass overlord drops. We saw this a lot in StarCraft 1. Coming here into StarCraft 2, he's going to try to come in. And I don't know if there's actually that much to defend. We see Cyril unloading all these gateways and pylons are exposed. Yeah, it looks like he's going to be able to pick off at least a couple of these pylons. Units from stats coming up into this main base. But look at that. Cyril going to load up and get out before losing anything. Okay, that was a great play. A little bit of damage done. Serral didn't really lose anything. You can see he's looking. He's trying to see if there's an imbalance in the defense somewhere. Is there a crack where he can slip through and start to do more damage? That's right, and I got to tell you, Stats is defending quite well. Yeah, he's losing a couple buildings here and there, but Serral hits that third like expected after the drop, and Stats is ready for him. But now the next phase of the game, something that Serral really excels at, that's lurker play. Lurker play is going to be very interesting. 
uh, from Serral. It can be used, of course, to defend, but also if you try to get a good position on the map, maybe at one of their expansions and burrow that, you're going to do so much damage. But first, Stats has to figure out how to get out on the map. Even though this army coming out is pretty scary, this is going to trigger the drop from Serral that's going to go in the main. We're seeing that happen right now. Oh, but look at this. He's got plenty of units here right now, I would say. A lot of Stalkers. Zealots being warped in as well. Serral deciding to fight. It's a bigger drop than the first time. Maybe Stats has overestimated his defense. Serral pushing him back down his ramp. If he can get those gateways, he's going to stop the production. But Stats is not turning around. Two great Ooh. storms damaging the bulk of what Serral has to defend. That is a really scary push coming out of Stats, but this drop into his main base is going to unpower more gateways. This is a big problem for Stats. How is he going to hold on? We see the push continuing to come forward. I don't know if Serral has an answer for all of these immortals. This expansion is going to go down. Meanwhile, Stats' main is in shambles. Oh, great. Size storms coming out, but still a few units remain. His gateway is mostly unpowered. Serral coming with a huge arc right now, trying to get in here, but the size storms of Stats, the immortal count of Stats are so strong. Keep in mind, there is no war prism with this army, so what you see is what you get. Serral continuing to surround the few remaining immortal drones now being pulled as well. The drones mean that this is serious. Serral knows he must hold right here, right now. Another great storm, but only three immortals left over, and it looks like Serral will hold. The last parts of the army have been destroyed, and back inside the main, there is nothing for Stats GG. Serral, a non-Korean pro gamer, right now leads against the best Protoss in the world, two to zero in the WCS Global Finals Championship match. It is looking more and more like Serral may be taking the throne of StarCraft away from the nation of South Korea. An amazing display of skill in both games, one and two. Stats himself playing very, very well. Of course, a lot of pressure on both sides, but it just feels like our Finnish player cannot be shaken. Stats is playing a really solid uh, opening here. Unfortunately, Serral just seems to have an answer. Stats was trying to tech up, he was trying to develop, but Serral had already set up a very intelligent attack. He did that drop in the main, he did a little bit of damage. Stats, hemming and hawing, decided to pull the trigger. He decided to push towards the south with an army that is very, very difficult to stop. As that happened, the drop came in. The infrastructure was destroyed for Stats. Stats' army is still scary. Managed to push through, actually destroying one of Serral's expansions, but ultimately, Serral pulled everything that he had and crush that attack, and here we are going into game number three. You know, the very small things that Serral does add up to very big victories. Just loading even more units into those Overlord stats, unready for that drop and being taken out. It's time for game number three. Can Serral go up three to zero, or will stats finally put a win on the board? Yeah, stats really needs to turn this around. It's so hard to have a reverse sweep in a best of seven. We just Almost never see it in StarCraft 2. All right, game three has loaded up. In the upper left, representing the Hermit Kingdom, he is Stats! And his opponent with a 2-0 lead in the bottom right, in the red, the Finnish Phenom, he is Cero! The crowd here at BlizzCon is hype, as it should be. Just a crazy amount of history being made at this event. You see the opening here <laughs> the same on thing. Dreamcatcher. Yeah, blocking that hatchery, but Serral, he hasn't cared yet. <laughs> he hasn't really been phased by this. So, what is Stats going to try to do here? I really liked what he did in game two. I think the problem is, is that once Serral started to do some damage, Stats panicked a little bit. And you were talking about this, but we had to jump in the game, but I want to go back and talk about mm. this Artosis because it's really important. The first drop that went into the main in game two, he actually backed it up with even more the second mm -hmm. time around. So that screwed the, screwed with the calculus for Stats on, on yeah. how much he needed to defend. He had a, an army there with Stalkers ready to try to shoot that down, but it was way more drop overlords. And that's when the game snowballed because Stats had already gone too far out on the map. He can't really turn around. If he does turn around and save his base, okay, great. Well, then Sterile continues to grow and expand and, and, and conquer the rest of the map. Yeah. And then Stats is just zoned out of a win. So 
very tough situation well, for Stats going it, into game three. It just shows the brilliance truly of both players. Even though it went wrong for Stats, he left exactly enough to crush the size of that first drop. And most Serbs, they don't even have the speed or the extra attentional resources to make that drop bigger. But there, Serral stands above all other Zergs on Earth, having to beat, <laughs> beat already the second best and third best Zergs out there and showing why he is here in the finals. Okay, we have the Stargate going down now. Again, Stat seems to want to open up in, in a pretty orthodox fashion. He's not really taking any huge risks. It's, it's fairly common to see in a best of seven, one or two all-ins or a cheese, mm -hmm. simply because, you know, you can rob a win from your opponent. Yeah. You, you, whatever they plan doesn't matter anymore because you, you got in there and you did the damage right away. But again, conservative play from both these guys so far. Yeah, yeah well, I, I kind of feel it. I think that if we do get into those later game situations, it can be a nice, even, long, highly contested game. Whereas Serral just doesn't seem to take damage early on. He's like completely cheese-proof almost. Yeah, it's quite interesting. And it's very subtle too, how well he handles every single engagement. He always has just a little bit more. There's nothing sloppy about anything he's doing. And that's where it's tough because we've already seen a few small errors here from Stats. We saw him lose the Adepts right away. Uh, in one game, we saw him lose the Oracle at one point in time. And it seems like you are simply not allowed to do that against Serral, or he gets a little bit ahead and then more ahead, mm -hmm. and suddenly you're completely smothered with a Zerg army. Well, that is certainly what we have seen thus far. Now, looking at the game that we're in, some good scouting by the Adept. We haven't seen any Adepts wasted yet. Looks like he's going to pressure a little bit more heavily with three this time. Doesn't want to just lose them to Zerglings like the previous game. Okay. The Oracle being made once more here. Now we have 10 links. Let's see if he makes any more. Because occasionally, even though you're taking a third base and one would think that's uh, there to try to expand more and more, sometimes we'll see Zergs pull the trigger and try something crazy. But this time it is going to be more and more drones. He's continuing to develop tech-wise. Tasteless, I, I don't know how Serral does this, but look, it's double Stargate play coming out of uh, stats here. And what does Serral do? He's just, he has an evolution chamber on the way probably for plus one melee attack for Zerglings, which is a great counter to double Stargate. I feel like he's reading stats like a book this game. Okay, here comes that Oracle, three kills, four, uh, as it goes ahead and backs out. And that was very nicely done there by stats. That's mm -hmm. the kind of attack he wanted to pull off, just getting enough damage done. Mm -hmm. um, and so the game will continue on, but Stats needs to keep up that kind of play if he's going to come out on top. And already, before I can finish my sentence, all of these adepts go down. <laughs> oh, that is really painful indeed to lose those. He needs to take that additional base, but every unit you lose, especially when you're going mass phoenixes, makes it harder and harder to secure the third nexus. And when Serral's doing a build like this, a strategy where he's just going to have masses of Zerglings, the Phoenixes don't fare well against that. Yeah, it's funny. Even though the Phoenixes can pick up the Zerglings and kill them, if the Zerglings are high enough in number, I mean, how many Phoenixes are you really going to need to actually take that out? And of course, if Lings are so fast as they move around the map, it's hard to keep track of them. Mm. Well, there is an Oracle there to help. So that third Nexus should be going down pretty soon here, and hopefully he can hold on. But Serral, in the meantime, he's working on his drone count, adding a bunch of queens as well, and looking completely fine this game. Yeah, so far, so good. I'm curious to see if Serral's going to try to set up those drops again, do something like that to try to get uh, the Protoss stuffed into the corner of the map, and all of a sudden he's having to react and defend and unable to actually ever get that push out, like we saw in game two. Mm -hmm. Well, right now the Phoenixes are coming out. We'll see how well defended uh, Serral is going to be against these. Quite a few of them, but look at this queen count. He's wow. got seven queens in his main base ready for these Phoenixes. Okay, the queens are coming forward here, and immediately they get right underneath those Phoenixes. Two drone kills, not bad, but certainly not enough for what he invested with these Phoenixes. Yeah, making a beeline to that third base. Now there is a spore there to help out on the defense. But overall, yeah, two spores even. Cyril really has read this beautifully and is defending every edge. Now when you invest in this many Phoenixes, 
you're obviously not investing in other stuff that you could have had. So you really need to make that work and make that pay for himself. By the way, this Oracle <laughs> spots those banelings. That was a good decision there yeah. by Sarah. They'll just cancel that. He'll have to come up with something else. And there's the Oracle tagging the lings to make sure he'll see exactly where they are in case they try to run in there and kill workers later on in the game. Yeah, very sneaky move by Sarah, but Stats counters it well with his scouting. But now we're going into the next phase of the game. Immortals are being made. Uh, we have the Hydralis Den on the way, Baneling Speed on the way. So we're going to go into a very classic battle in Protoss versus Zerg. And that is the battle of Protoss to get into his Psy Storm, his Charge, his Immortals against the deadly Hydralis Baneling composition. And this is kind of the age old PVZ here in StarCraft 2. Uh, the Zerg will continue to grow uh, on the map. The Zerg always wants to be one to two expansions ahead of the Protoss. That's just the nature of the way they operate. And the Protoss is eventually going to come out here and try to do some damage. Now, this is some great harass here. Nine drones killed, and I don't think he's done yet. These Phoenixes are going to rotate over here towards the main, and they could certainly get some more pickups if he decides to go for it. Yeah, it looks like he's going to continue to try to harass here. He's taking a lot of damage on those Phoenixes, so they're certainly very bruised and are going to have a hard time against Hydralis. But 12 drones isn't bad. Look at that, 21 overall. Stats is still making this work pretty well. Yeah, Stats is playing the game he needed to bring here in mm -hmm. game one or game two. These Phoenixes are actually beginning to pay for themselves and a lot more. We have some more gateways coming down here with two Robos up. Immortals will be coming out at a pretty quick pace. And I'm actually feeling pretty optimistic for Stats in this game. Yeah, yeah. You know, it opened up with Serral having a pretty good strategy against what Stats had decided to do. But Stats has dealt with it well. It's Truthfully, both players playing very nicely, but Stats is finally going to get into a game that he likes, I think. The Lings continue to stay outside of the base here. He's just looking for any stray units he can surround, any more damage he can do. And we'll see the rocks are going to be torn down here as well. We do want to keep in mind, if we could just go big picture here, in the upper right corner of the map, um, we could end up seeing the gold base be taken here. So we want to watch for that. Occasionally, Zergs will take that. And then if they just have that for too long, there's not a lot you can do to stop them because they just outproduce you. Yeah, it's definitely a good point. But, uh, you know, I think what we will end up seeing this game, perhaps, is just a, a very standard game. We do have the creep spread getting all the way up, getting close to the third base of stats. and. A lot of times, swarm host play can be nice in this type of situation. You kind of launch the locust over the wall, but with Phoenixes and Storm ready for that, we could also see Serral just go up into his hive tech. You're absolutely right. We see that size storm, by the way, getting close to being finished. That's one of the last big things that Protoss really need in order to combat huge throngs of Zerg units is just having all that damage come out uh, so immediately. By the way, a warp prism is being made here as well, which could tell us that we're going to start seeing, at the bare minimum, a harass, at the mm. most, a push. Yeah, that's right. Now, Swarm Hosts are the order of the day here for Serral. He is getting ready to try to abuse the terrain on this map heavily against Stats. But Stats is good against this type of play as well. Oh, Hydralis <laughs> getting caught there in a Stasis Ward for a moment at least. Looks like he does want to put pressure on, but I can't see him breaking through here. And this is pretty common for a Zerg in a fairly passive game like this is to start to position your army. Whoa, 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 whoa. Templars now hitting, uh, being hit by some of these Banelings. That's what I was saying earlier. Yeah, to get your army just on the edges of their bases, you're waiting to see them leave on one side, and then you come in on the other and try to do damage. When they come back and try to defend, you just run out. Yeah, it's definitely a very strong tactic that both these players are familiar with. Now, the Swarm Hosts are large in number right now, but Stats is pretty ready. He has a lot of Static D, he has a lot of Splash damage, and he has a Prism out on the map. That Prism is going to be so important. If he can get some big Warpins while Serral's units are on the other side, that's where some big counter damage can happen. Okay, we see those Locusts coming up, abusing this ridge over here. He can rain those down and try to take out the Templars, and that's exactly what he does. Wow, fantastically done picking off all those High Templars. That means the Hydras can come in here and just rail through those Archons. The rest of Stats' army coming up. He does have Psy Storm in here, so he should still be able to hold. Beautifully done. Meanwhile, the Zealots that were intended to try to wipe out this hatchery have been cleaned up by these Zerglings. Yeah, Stats, I mean, his defense is pretty good, but it seems like Serral is just being a bit more efficient, ready now to launch his Locusts at that fourth base when they're recharged. And this specific technique that we're seeing with the Swarm House is very specific to this map. He mm. can actually launch those over that edge and then retreat to safety. Yeah, it's it's a really great strat, and Serral showing us how powerful it really can be. Now, does Stats know he's down here? No, he absolutely does not. Just a group of Zealots there, which won't be that helpful. In the meantime, a lot of Banelings rolling up. And he completely shuts that down. 
Uh, meanwhile, Sarah going to try to come in here again. It's so important that Stats manages to keep this expansion alive here. More Bane Link spilling forward. Some great force fields go down. Some Psy Storms as well, trying to help clear this up. Oh, Bane Link's rolling into that mineral line as well. Ten probes fall. And I got to say, Cyril is being very efficient. He's not ready to kill Stats right now, but he continues to pick off high-tech units like High Templar. The Stats has gotten his four bases up. He has the upgrades, but it seems like Cyril really has the position. And you're totally right, Artosis. He's not actually overextending basically ever. He comes in there, he does the damage. The moment he identifies, okay, I've overstayed my welcome, he'll mm -hmm. go back out. Meanwhile, Cyril is continuing to finish up his tech tree on his side of the map. That's right, getting ready for those important Broodlords. Look at this, another dive in here with those Locusts. He's surrounding so many immortal stats, having a terrible time right now. GG! That's not even going to struggle so anymore. I mean, he just, when you look at the supplies at the end there, Sarah was maxed out. Sats couldn't get out on the map. I mean, that was by far the most one-sided game that we had here with them. I mean, Sats really wasn't able to come up with anything. Eventually, he realized, OK, he has too much. I am too small. There is no way for me to grow on the map. And I think at this point in time, Stats is dumbfounded yeah. about how exactly he's going to take on Cyril. Well, I think the whole world is dumbfounded about that because this kid does not lose. He wins every single tournament, and he is poised to take down the world championship. We are going to a quick break. We come back. Game number four in the WCS Global Finals.
The 2018 StarCraft II World Championship Series Global Finals are brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Corsair, T-Mobile, Samsung SSD, and NVIDIA. At the WCS Global Finals, Cyril versus Stats. Right now, Cyril up with a 3-0 lead. If Cyril wins one more game, history is going to be made in a way that we have never seen before in StarCraft, ever. We have the longest, most epic history of the eSports. And to have this happening right now in such a dominating fashion is absolutely something that I never expected. Cyril one map win away from winning. And if he wins this next map, he's only lost one game in the entire World Championship Tournament against the very best of the best. And we must conclude that he is by far the best StarCraft II player in the world. If he can actually 4-0 stats, the one Korean who's managed to get this far to survive, he's representing every Korean gamer ever. Esports started in South Korea, Artosis. Mm -hmm. They have been dominant, not just in StarCraft, but plenty of other games. But StarCraft has always been the one they've really killed it <laughs> at. And Cyril is here to change that all here right now. Let's make some noise. Let's get hype. We are going into game number four. Sets versus Cyril. Korea versus Finland. Introducing our player in the upper left, in the blue, from South Korea. He is Stats! His opponent in the bottom right, the non-Korean hope from Finland, makes some noise for Cyril! And now it's time to see what does Stats do with his back up against the wall, zero map wins against three. His chance at immortality hangs in the balance. Now we have had comebacks occur before in best of sevens, but it's very rare. I mean, at this point in time for Cyril, he has such an array of different ways he can play, and if he loses one of the games, it's fine. The series continues. Mm -hmm. He could all in. He could keep doing what he's already doing. He could try something completely crazy we haven't seen before. So this is going to be one of the hardest things ever for Stats to take on. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I want to say that he can do it, Tasteless. I want to believe here still. He did bring Cyril to seven games, of course, in that beautiful GSL versus the World Finals. But Cyril got the best of him. Stats. What do you do now? We've seen Stargate openings here. Um, one time a proxy, another time very modest, just in the main. We also had the double Stargate in game number three. Mm -hmm. But so far, it hasn't done anything. Are we going to see a Stargate again? Does Stats decide to discard that uh, coming in here and do something a little bit crazier? I don't know, but you have to be thinking. You know, In this series, each game, you're getting a read on your opponent. What works? What doesn't? Mm -hmm. This is Stats' last chance. He has to start winning here now. So I'm very curious to see what kind of build order he's going to show us here tonight. Yeah, it could be time to really spice it up. We're going to see in just a moment what his tech choice is. It is the Stargate once again, staying with the tried and the true. Stargate, that is your macro opener. Hell, that's a lot of times the way that you open up even to deceive your opponent, push his overlords around with that Phoenix and do something sneaky afterwards. We're going to see what Stats is up to. Let's also keep in mind that there's been a few moments where Stats has miscontrolled either his Oracle or his few adapts and, lose, and loses them. Now, in a lot of StarCraft 2 games, that's fine. You can recover. Against Cyril, it does not appear to be the case. So let's keep our eyes on those adapts and see how much damage they do and if they can actually get out in one piece. All right, the first adept coming down right now, running past the Queen just slightly, sends its shade in. Don't know if they <laughs> let that one finish. No. Does cancel, continuing to scout a bit. We also have a Phoenix speed made for the first mm -hmm. unit out of the Stargate. So no deviation here with the Stargate built. Now, 
when you see a Stargate opening, it doesn't necessarily mean much of anything other than he's going to have a few air units. He can mm -hmm. still bring the game into so many different directions. The advantage of having a Stargate out, besides you know being able to snipe a few drones with the Oracle, is you can pretty much scout the Zerg, you can monitor what they're doing, and then try to figure out how you want to react. Uh, well, he's going to push away this Overlord for now. The Overlord scouts the double gas here in the natural. So to Serral, everything looks normal. So we see these links coming up right now. And so far, so good. I mean, a very, very modest game. I, I'm not entirely sure um, what Sarah wants to do either here. We can't get a good read on either of these guys. OK, well, now we see what the plan is here for stats. He's going for double Stargate play again. And you know what? It didn't work in the previous game, but he did get good damage done. So here comes that Oracle now, moving out across the map. Again, this can go either way. We mostly want to watch and see, is this Oracle actually going to be picked off? Is there going to be any kind of mistakes as far as control? Um, and here we go. That Overlord taking a little bit of damage as the Oracle continues to rotate around. And Cyril, so far, he doesn't show any signs of knowing exactly what this build is from Stats. Stats flying into the main base. Going to see how many drones he can get. Oh, very quick morph right there. And it looks like none. Not the <laughs> Doesn't lose anything, Ooh. so so far no drones killed, uh, nothing lost air-wise here. Mm -hmm. The Phoenixes are continuing to be uh, pulled out here in pairs as he's going to try to put a little bit more pressure on. Now let's keep in mind, game three was kind of weird, right? It almost seemed like there wasn't a major event, and it it almost looks as if really uh, Serral outplayed Stats so much that yeah. Stats suddenly realized, oh my god, I am actually so behind, I didn't do anything. So maybe he's going to be a little bit more aggressive this time around with the Stargate opening and really try to get into Serral's face. Well, it looks like this is actually strategically speaking, a little bit better for stats than in that previous game where he went for double Stargate Phoenix. Serral's making a Roach War, and the Roaches won't be very good against the Phoenixes. It doesn't seem like he really knows what's going on. The third base for stats coming up pretty quickly as well. We're going to have to see how much damage he can do. And now, finally, Serral knows what's going on. Okay, Phoenix is now coming down once again. Stats really trying to be cautious. He doesn't want to do anything crazy with these. And we see the double robo here. So Stats so far in this game is really saying he's learned everything that he's made a mistake of this time around, and he's going to have a much cleaner opening. Mm. And he's hoping to bring this into that super late game and be able to match Serral, possibly taking him out with a push. Well, it seems like he's probably done with his Phoenix production. Let's see how much damage he can accumulate through flying around to the different bases. Multiple spores going up absolutely everywhere. Serral dogging these phoenixes with his queens, chasing them around, trying to minimize damage. Okay, the phoenixes continue to take out a few drones. I gotta say, so far, this is looking pretty good here for stats. I mean, this is really what we've been waiting on. Mm -hmm. Again, if stats loses it here, this is a huge blow to South Korea. South Korea has never not been the most dominant force in StarCraft 1 and StarCraft 2, and Cyril is here to change history. All right, <laughs> change history. He's already done that, I think. Make history, I guess, not change yeah. He's not going back in time, you're right. But yeah. <laughs> well, right now, these Phoenix is still looking for some damage. Serral, with his good defense, getting up into his Hydralis play, getting up into those Banelings, as well as taking his fourth. But stats producing nicely. And so with the fourth base coming here, it's still fairly even. The Phoenix is coming here. Nice little snipe on this queen. He might try to get some drones as well, maybe some overlords. And he's staying in between the second and third base because you can see the minerals pointed at the Phoenix. It's easy to go in between those areas and do a little bit of damage. Yeah, and Coca showing us only four drones killed so far. So it's that's a little bit underwhelming for the two Stargate Phoenixes, but he is picking off a few other units here and there, not really losing a lot of Phoenixes either. Okay, a few more drones have been taken out. And we're now seeing stats really develop into, I would say, what is probably the most standard, solid way to play a PvZ. He's going to try to get all that tech up. We see the Templar Archives is finishing. We'll most likely see Storm coming up here. Immortals are going to continue to grow in number. We have Zealot Legs on the way. Meanwhile, Cyril, always staying one expansion ahead, is trying to drone up as much as humanly possible, trying to get enough of an economy going that he can match whatever stats is going to come out here with. Yeah, he's making quite a few Hydras as his upgrades finish as well, morphing a few Banelings in here. We could see him start putting on some pressure pretty soon, and considering Psystorm is really nowhere near done, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Here he goes with those Banelings into the third base. We see the base coming in. Five probes killed up, and the Oracle cleans up the last one. Now, that's not exactly efficient for that many Banelings to come in to only get those probes, but it's something. Also, with stats flying over this fourth base, we haven't seen any drones mine there, because if they did get there, 
here. The <laughs> Phoenix would just, would just pick them up and kill them. Yeah, but with these Hydra's out, he's actually pushing them back, kills off some of these Phoenixes, and he's definitely got enough units now to protect this base. Look at that, instantly droning it up. He's near 80 workers right now, but Stats isn't doing too shabby himself. The one thing I'm afraid about, those swarm hosts coming out of Serral once again. You're totally right, Artosis. It seems like Stats has really struggled to actually have any kind of answer to those swarm hosts. And it's in part because Serral's been so good at positioning them with these gorilla attacks, sending the locusts in, and then running back out without really receiving any damage. But I think this time around, if we get a shot of the middle of the map here, I think Stats is actually going to push. Mm. And he's going to try to initiate before Serral can set up what he wants to do. Yeah, if you wait for him to start launching those locusts at you, it's very hard to get the pressure off now stats out here with his entire army we have his first person view right now he is playing for his life here in the world championships moving around he's going to be able to clear some of this creep kind of patrolling looking for any units to pick off okay he's slowly edging in here he wants to be very cautious there is a warp prism on the move we don't quite see it because we're in first person here but there's a warp prism going into the main he wants to warp in an army cause Cyril to try to run back and defend and then he's going to start attacking these expansions and great control here with these phoenixes taking out those banelings as well yeah, all right, the Banelings do get taken out, but we saw a drop overlord being made. Definitely, we're going to see more harassment as well. We have Warpins of Zealots into the main base as Serral tries to attack Stats. Stats is doing some counter harass. Okay, nicely done. He's actually hitting those drones. He's going to set up his fourth base. Let's see if he actually decides to push in here. Oh my god, but here come those locusts hitting in this angle, and they're going right for that Nexus. Arms coming down here to try to save it, and it looks like he might just barely be able to do it in time. Oh, he does look like he's going to save that Nexus. All right. In the meantime, he did get eight drones from all that harassment. Some great multitasking, as we saw there from Stats. And Serral just going to rebuild. He is maxed out. Okay, Stats is on the move here. He's going to try to attack in. The Swarmos are just to the left of this. If he could Whoa. actually catch those Swarmos, that would be huge. Yeah, the Phoenix is getting right up on top of this. It looks like he is going to catch at least a couple of them. But in the meantime, he's got to look out. There is a Baneling drop headed for his mineral lines. Okay, and that's coming in right now. I don't think that Stats sees it. The Banelings are unloading, and so oh. many workers are being killed oh. off. 17 probes, huge economic damage dealt two stats there that one really hurt you can see now uh Cyril gonna try to come out here with a little bit of an attack now Cyril is maxed out but this is sort of normal this is how the, the you know the ebb and flow of the matchup pvc stats has a little bit more time to max out but from here we should see Cyril try to leverage his position start poking in at different angles mm -hmm. and trying to do some damage yeah he's continuing to make this very fearsome hydraling bane army but stats hasn't faltered yet some great size storms going down those banelings rolling through the army set off all those immortal shields but these size storms from stats are amazing those side storms so perfect. It seems like Stats may be able to take out this initial expansion. We have the Locust coming in from behind, but I don't know if Cyril can defend. All right, he needs to hit some good side storms here still, and down they go. The Locust jumping in, but Stats dealing massive damage, and GG is called. Stats puts his name on the board. The comeback is happening. He's finally mapped out a game from start to finish where he can punish Cyril, but it's a long road ahead. He still has to win three more Artosis. Yeah, and it is a tough uphill climb, but Stats playing his own game there. Some great harassment. He was maneuvering around the map. He was taking control in that mid game instead of waiting for Cyril to assault him with Swarm Host. Really beautifully done, but of course, what does Serral do now? I mean, we saw him use Swarm Hosts a lot back there. It made sense because it was working more often than it wasn't working, but there's so many different ways to play a ZVP. Yeah, there are. You know, I think he's going to stay with this kind of reactive style because it has been working so well. Sure, Stats took the most recent game, but if Serral keeps on putting Stats through very tough situations, I feel like in the next three games, he's likely to falter. All of these games have been pretty textbook as well. It's, it's interesting because we see cheeses very often, at least one or two, mm -hmm. in, a, in a best of five, in a best of seven. Let's see what happens now. We're going into game five here. Um, right now, Stats versus Cyril. Right now, Cyril with a 3-1 lead.
Introducing our first player in the blue from South Korea, our Protoss. He is Stats. And his opponent, one win away from being the WCS Global Champion from Finland, Arsur. Make some noise for Cero. Cyril getting that early hatchery down, knowing that Stats was so likely to send the probe to try to block it. And Stats unable to do so. So just going to go into this main base and maybe lightly harass those mineral patches. So we have that, uh, we have another game here where I don't know where it's going to go, but I'm really wondering about some kind of all in here. It just seems like if you're the Zerg and you're up this much and you just need one more game, mm -hmm. you could absolutely take a risk. And if it doesn't work, you still have wiggle room to try other stuff. Yeah, it is true. But momentum is a real thing in StarCraft. What if Stats blocks your all-in here? What if suddenly he regains the confidence that you stole from him in those first three games? Things could get out of control. We see the wall in beginning to get set up here. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. Uh, we'll have a much better idea of what the Protoss is going to do when the cybernetic score finishes. That's where you start to have a branch uh, in what kind of build order mm -hmm. you can go for. Well, every game so far, it has been Stargate. Are we going to see that again? It seems like his most successful games have been these two Stargate Phoenix games. He's done fantastically with that. But like you've been saying, you know, maybe Sarah will all in. Maybe he'll look at this and say, oh, Stats thinks he can beat me with that multiple times. Let's try something crazy against it. It's interesting because the game that we just saw Stats win, I mean, he was not wavering. He basically said, no, 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 no. I got it. I figured out what Sarah's doing. I'm going to do the same thing I was trying before, mm -hmm. and I'm going to make it work. And it did work. Um, so there's also the chance that Stats simply says, I have one blueprint. <laughs> I have one way of doing this, and I am going to I'm going to do it no matter what. And uh, that's not the case now because this build is now <laughs> deviating. This is what we were waiting for to see what kind of tech was going to mm -hmm, come down here. Mm -hmm. Well, that is definitely a big deal. We are getting out of Stargate territory and into the Twilight. So this is generally going to be a very aggressive build from a Protoss player. That Twilight, you're going to get uh, either you know it could be a more macro-oriented quick Archon drop, but it could also be something very aggressive, like a, an adept glaives all in. Oh, sure, certainly. I mean, when you see something like this coming, what it says is that he wants to punish a player who's trying to play an economy game. You want to come in and blindside them and suddenly mm -hmm. have an attack going on. And they're, they're basically too busy making tech buildings, making workers, and things slip out of control very quickly. They're going to have a lot of workers go down, and usually you can set up a killing blow from there. Yeah, now a Robo is being made. We'll see if he adds any sort of Templar building. Ah, oh, the Dark Shrine coming up. A wise wow. man once said, when behind Dark Shrine, but this isn't just for Dark Templars. It's for Archons and dropping as well. So we saw the Archon drop used early on, but let's let's touch upon this one more time. We When you have Archons with a War Prism, because they're all shields and because you can be so abusive with picking up Archons in a War Prism, mm -hmm. as long as you only lose the War Prism and the two Archons, you pretty much always do some amount of damage and you don't really receive any. Uh, the, the shields eventually regen mm -hmm. and you're in good shape. Well, Ling's uh, poking in towards the front there. This Archon drop going to be ready relatively soon. The Dark Shrine takes a long time to finish, but Stats has this timed out well. I'm excited to see what type of damage he can get done with this. Sometimes you can even catch them off guard with those Dark Templar. Yeah, that's true. You can always try to come in there with the Dark Templar and maybe gun down a hatchery and then pick up and make the Archons mm -hmm. later on. There's a lot of ways to play this, and there's a whole series of different angles. Oh, hold on a sec. That Link just spots that War Prism. So yeah. already I think Cyril's going to be, be ready or at least aware that something's coming his way. Well, let's see where he has detection right now. He's making a spore, but that does not always stop Dark Templar. Let's see. He's going to warp in those first initial oh, four. Oh, he doesn't see it. You're totally right, though, Artosis. Oh. Sometimes you'll see them just click on the spore and kill it, and then the Dark Templars are back oh. to being invisible, and that's what we're going to see right here as he is hitting that spore right now. In fact, units come up to fight them, and the Dark Templar turn around bravely and assault the Queens and Lings, chasing them back. It looks like he will not get that hatchery kill, but will start his harassment. Yeah, he saw that Overseer was being made over there and decided instead he's going to try to do as much damage as he can before the Overseer gets over here. And as that Overseer is there, he's going to pick up, relocate, and then 
begin the Archon harass. That was really nicely done. Great micro overall. Look at how much damage he's already done with these four Dark Templars. And now that they're turning into Archons, the harassment is not going to stop. So from here, Cyril needs to continue to deflect and defend as he tries to grow and develop. Stats is getting his third base. There's not really any easy way for Cyril to try to attack that with these Archons coming in here like this. And look at that. Those Archons picking off a few Roaches here and there. Going to the main base now, chasing this Queen back. Stats on a rampage right now with this War Prism. OK, so far so good. Doing some good damage here. That Archon getting very low, almost loses it. He does pick that up. He may try to relocate over to where the third base is for Cyril. Yeah, he's flying around. He's got to let the shields come back a little bit as well. Like you said, you know, the Archons can take a beating, but they will regenerate quickly. Drops off at this third base here, and it looks like he's not ready, but a great transfusion to save that queen. Yeah, one problem right now for stats is that one of these Archons lost all the shields, and the other has a decent amount, so he's got to be careful. If he loses that, it's really bad. Mm. Uh, we see Cyril already completely and totally prepared. Uh, stats is trying to dodge the volleys from the Roaches by picking them up as the animation is mm. happening, but... This is, this is pretty tricky. I mean, he hasn't really done that much. Stats mm -hmm. hasn't. No. Uh, you know, he's gotten some damage here and there, but certainly Serral is not crippled by any means. He's still producing well. He's getting up into his Storm Host tech, but Stats continues to keep that pressure on. Serral looking to finish off this series as he's played it out so far with those Storm Hosts. That's right. Up. He does not want to deviate. He says if it's not, uh, you know, if it's not broken, you don't need to fix it. So he'll come in here and try that once more. Again, though, his stats seem to have adapted very well in mm -hmm. game four. Like, he was not phased at all and basically swatted down everything that Serral threw at him and then closed it out with a push. Well, here's the question, though. Does he know about these Storm Hosts there on the way? I would say no, he doesn't. All of his vision really has been through this drop. He hasn't seen that infestation pit. It was very well placed by Serral. So if he doesn't know about that, will he move out? Well, he answers me right there with a move out. So he's coming out. Now, it's much better to have Storm Hosts when you're trying to attack their opponent's base and harass them. They're not exactly ideal for defense. Mm -hmm because you can always run away and then just hit from a different angle. Yeah, this is a very strong attack coming out as well. Cyril not with a very big army at the moment. If he gets a very good engagement with these Locusts, maybe he can flank or come in from behind, pick off an Archon or something like that. It'll definitely help out, but this is a scary army from stats. Okay, he's opened up that ramp area. You can see Cyril is set up. He's kind of waiting to see, okay, is Stats actually going to move in or what? He sent a hallucinated Phoenix in there to basically scout out and get an idea of what's going on, and Stats decides to rotate down here towards the bottom at 6 o'clock. A uh, little Ling counterattack going across the map. There is a cannon here, so shouldn't it be too much of a problem. Stats seeing it instantly does do a small warp in, and here come the Locusts. Okay, some force fields come down to try to sandbag uh, any progress made by that ground army, as he really doesn't want to have to engage these Locusts unless he has to. And the Locusts now coming down here to connect. Great warp prison micro here by Stats. Yeah, very well done. Nice juggling. Turns around and fights. Serral running for his life right now. Gets up to this choke, and Stats turns around as well. Every time those locusts come out, it's a little while before the swarm host is ready with mm. more. So what Stats is trying to do is get the best engagement. And then as Serral is trying to retreat and make more units, he wants to try to come in there and do some damage mm. of his own. Right now, Serral is doubling down on his tech. More swarm hosts, more roaches on the way. Stats still microing around, seeing if he can pick off anything. But it looks like he's going to turn around for now while he waits for Psy Storm. And here comes the fourth base here for Stats. Now, it seems like Stats hasn't really taken any kind of a beating, right? He's getting a Psy Storm up here. We're waiting to see if these Locusts can come out, but, oh, this is actually a great play. If he can get some more of these Locusts, or these uh, Swarm Hosts, rather, this would mm. be huge. And look at that. You force them to launch, and you just pick up your Archons. You run away with the rest of your army. Well done. But Serral, no slouch himself, doesn't launch all of his Locusts, so he still has some offensive potential with this army. Yeah, the mini games going on between these two players is so cool to see. And look, the Locusts really are not able to do anything that happens life not long enough to keep them in the mm. game but the next wave is going to come in here and it seems like Cyril actually is going to try to come in here and maybe chip away at this third base all right Psy Storm just finished up right now let's see if he does throw any of those very crucial storms down some nice forest fields picking off a few units but good Biles connect right there from Cyril yeah very intelligently Cyril backed off 
um, and use those force fields in some ways against the Protoss. Some of the army getting stuck over there, but Stats is going to rotate around. He's going to try to get some more of these uh, these uh, swarm hosts here. Great storm. Yeah, good force field there as well. The locusts get launched out. Some storms going down on the Roach Ravager. Serral microing back. He's trying to not get hit by too many immortal shots here while whittling down the Zog count of Stats. Oh, there's really not anywhere to escape to up here. He's scrambling, but uh, as Stats continues to pursue this, this is going to be a lot of Ravagers and Roaches that could be picked up. Meanwhile, an attack down here at the bottom. Stats trying to hit this fresh base of Serral's. Oh, but look at that micro from Serral. He's trying to bait those zealots away into the roaches. Stats, though, wisely turns around, doesn't want to waste this counter harassment force. As the game goes on, Stats seems to be where he wanted to. He's gotten everything set up. He has all that tech. He's got Psy Storm. He's making his fourth base, and now he's pushing. Now in game four, we saw this was the moment that Serral fell. Yeah, now can Stats do it again? Can he make this a pattern of being able to knock out this type of play with the Hive finishing up? We're going to have more options coming up for Serral shortly. Oh, oh, some very good force heals. Serral with a bit of a mistake there. Launches some Biles, but loses a few Ravagers. Looks like we've got a counterattack here with these Roaches. Interested in trying to deny this fourth base. Meanwhile, Stats again spilling in with these Zealots. Serral has to defend this location as well. A lot of side storms coming down. Those Locusts doing near no damage to the army of stats it looks like stats finally getting something done and i think he's going to kill the fourth base as well stats with a beautiful formation is coming in here to try to get the killing move off that base at the bottom has fallen side storms blanketing this entire area it looks like Cyril might lose this game yeah it really does he's losing so much but the counter attack is still going on the third base of stats under fire but gg is called and stats takes yet another game he is one step closer to turning this entire thing around. Each game, we're seeing stats get better and better at countering what Serral's doing. I'm getting worried, Artosis. I think mm -hmm. if Serral is going to win this, he might need to shift gears. He might need to come with a different strategy, a different play style. He may need to, Tasteless. I'm inclined to agree with you at this point. Stats is reading these situations better and better. This is the beauty of a best of seven in StarCraft II. You have time to look at how your opponent is playing. You have time to adjust yourself, adjust your mindset, change your strategy up, and try to counter them a little bit better each and every game. Going into this now, you have to wonder what Serral's thinking. I mean, it looked like earlier on when we had the 3-0 that we were going to be done with this finals you know, almost before it started. We were moving so quickly. But now Stats is starting to look very scary because he's not even winning with tricky play. He's winning with solid play. Mm -hmm. He's just making minor adjustments, and each time he looks stronger than the game before. Yeah, and he's really kind of ratcheting himself up a notch, to be honest. Watching that micro with the Warp Prism early on with those four Dark Templars, the amount of damage he was able to output with these very flimsy units was fantastic. If he starts losing a few of those, then suddenly Serral is not even worried about their Archon drops anymore. All right, let's make some noise in here as we move into game number six. Stats versus Serral, a fight. South Korea versus Finland. Who will become the champion of the entire world? We are so close to getting that answer. Introducing our first player from South Korea in the bottom right, our Protoss. He is Stats. His opponent in the upper left, here to break the Korean combo from Finland. Make some noise for Cyril. Once again, everything on the line. Score is three to two. Cyril on match point for the rest of this series. But Stats, he's starting to gain that momentum. Cyril has to be wondering, what strategy will Stats pull out next? I am so curious. Because the fact that Cyril, each game is, is, is so similar to the one before. And that's unusual, especially for a finals mm -hmm. with two StarCraft two pros. But they both seem to be committed that they really do have the best way of approaching this matchup. And there's no need for tricks. There's no need mm -hmm. for deception. You just go in and you do it better. You want to be faster. You want to produce more. 
and cover all your bases, cover all your loose ends, come out with a win. Well, I, I, as smart as that sounds, I kind of want to see some tricks and deception coming <laughs> up here from one of these guys. You know, they're, they're finding out so much about each other, but this nonstop brute force battle of them barely bending out of their styles, just showing off how strong they are. It might behoove one of them to do something sneaky to try to pick up a quick victory. Yeah, I mean, if, if Stats wins here, it's actually tied up. We're going to go to the final game, which mm. would be crazy. And Stats might actually have a reverse sweep. But you, again, you we cast a lot of StarCraft, guys. You just never <laughs> have that happen. It is, it is a rare thing indeed. No question about that. And <laughs> if Stats does that, I mean, he is going to be a hero back home in South Korea. But first, we have to see what's he going to do, a Stargate. So this is a rematch of GSL versus the world where Cyril actually managed to win this series 4-3. Uh, and when that happened, the number one thing trending on the news in South Korea, if you search for it, it was on Naver, which is like Korean Google, basically, uh, was that a Korean lost to a non-Korean. Mm -hmm. And all the Koreans on the message boards were saying, all right, we need to step up our game. This is unacceptable. Um, now... We're having this happen again here. There's just so much pressure, mm -hmm. really, for stats. It's hard to find any country that's as good as at anything as Korea is at StarCraft. Yeah, I, I would argue that it just does not exist. Uh, <laughs> their reign of domination has been thorough. Never expected this day to come, but happy that it's here where Cyril really can challenge for that number one spot. And look, already a very nice scout. He gets those two links in, scouts exactly what's going on. In the meantime, a single adept in the base of Cyril. So far, everything pretty ordinary. We have that Phoenix coming out with an Oracle behind it. We see Cyril setting up that third base. Again, guys, nothing looks really cheesy. Nothing seems to be deceptive. Mm -hmm. They just want to play straight up standard StarCraft. Yeah, now what is the next uh, tech step here for stats? With the Zerg player, you are normally the reactive player. You're kind of sitting back, trying to figure out what your opponent is doing and absorbing that so that you can grow larger and larger on the map quite literally and take them out in the later game. Oh, a second Stargate once again okay. from Stats. Okay, now we've seen him tinker with this, but never do anything you know crazy or dramatic with it. He just goes around and tries to keep pressure and bully the Zerg. Mm -hmm. The games that we've seen uh, excuse me, Stats win, he pretty much has Psy Storm Immortals. He, he, he has all the bases basically covered. Mm -hmm. He's deflected the Baneling drops or the Ling counter attacks. And then he pushes, and he just has the right surface area where nothing the Zerg can do is going to work. So there is the opportunity here. You can do this in, in pretty much all the matchups to try to really do a very precise attack right in the mid game and interrupt that moment, basically stopping the game from Ooh. getting where it would be. Yeah, indeed. Now, uh, it is important to note that Serral spent money to get Overlord Speed rather early on, so he's going to get a solid scout of these Stargates before Stats is ready for him to know. That's really going to help Serral in properly countering this build order and properly countering this strategy and not losing many drones. Exactly. I mean, in a game like StarCraft, you need to see, if you can find out what your opponent's doing, a lot of times you can counter it. This is what makes this game different from so many other uh, strategy games historically, is it is incomplete information. You can hide stuff. And a lot of times you can even uh, trick your opponent. You can give him a red herring. Uh, StarCraft mm -hmm. is also a game about lying and deception. Well, he's running his Phoenixes away, but finally the Overlord does spot them. Cyril now knows what's going on. And I got to say, Tasteless, you say it's a game of incomplete information. It always has been, but sometimes it feels like when I'm watching Cyril that he has complete information. <laughs> and he reacts so well. Look at this. Additional spores going up, extra queens being made. He's really getting ready for these Phoenixes. Okay, here come those Phoenixes now. And I don't think they're really going to do the damage that Stats is looking for. If the queens are already here to basically deflect this. Yeah, the phoenixes flying around. They see those queens. You're not going to fly into that, that's for sure. Flying across, going towards the third base. We'll see if anything's there. In the meantime, of course, getting up into his double robo. Okay, that double robo coming up here. And now the phoenixes have come in. They do not get that one queen, or the one overlord, excuse me, over there. He's going to try to fly into the main instead. See if he can't pick Ooh. off any drones. Cyril is serious about his defense here. Look at that. Three spores and a queen in the main base. Still picks off some drones. You're, I mean, if you have this many phoenixes, you're always going to get some damage, but you don't want to lose them too early. 
It's interesting because when you see a player invest in these Phoenixes, they really do have to do some damage. You can't invest in it and then it, and nothing happens. So each of these drone, drone kills is so important and so far so good. That's what he was looking for. Mm -hmm. But behind this, Stats is going to get more and more Immortals so he can actually combat a, a Zerg ground army. Yeah, and that is what Serral's building up to right now. He has the Baneling Nest on the way. He has the Hydralis down on the way. That's what Stats expects to see. That's what he expects to play against. He just needs to slow Serral down enough that he has his Psy Storm ready, he has his Immortals, his Charge, his Gateways, his Economy all together. A few Lings coming in here. Again, we saw in the earlier games, he attempted to snipe those sentries, but we're not having anything like that right now. Mm -hmm. And really what Stats is doing, he's beginning to pay off those phoenixes. Mm -hmm. He's getting the drones, he's getting the kills. I'm really liking this game for stats. Yeah, he's only a few uh, workers behind right now. Look at that, 15 drones already killed off, a couple overlords as well. But Serral's getting into a nice unit composition and he's getting ready for his deadly Swarmos play again. Okay, another big kill there. These phoenixes, it seems like Serral's really struggling with just the position that they're in. Mm -hmm. You have to have your queen split up correctly. And because there's so many phoenixes, one of them can tank some damage while mm -hmm. the rest will end up taking out these workers. Yeah, he keeps harassing those gas workers as well, very importantly. Now, he saw that there was an infestation pit, but it is not for swarm hosts. Serral is rushing up the tech tree right now. It looks like he's going to go for broodlords. And this is the deviation that we were wondering about. He couldn't possibly go uh, you know, for swarm hosts mm -hmm. every single game. And I'm curious to see if Stats is actually going to be ready for this and how exactly he will respond. Well, he just scouted that hive, and the hive isn't very far along, so that's a very important important moment here for Stats. He has to decide now, do I try to kill Serral before he gets into Broodlord play? Or does he back up? Does he get Carriers or Tempest to deal with that in a longer game? The Phoenix is coming in again. He might try to clip off a few more drones. And I got to say, man, this is really becoming a lot of worker kills. Mm -hmm. This is way more than we had in previous games, and, and that's pretty scary. So 22 drones total have been killed off. Now, he lost three Phoenixes, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, I mean, really, the idea here is that every time you kill a drone, they have to remake it. If they're remaking a drone, then they're not making an attacking unit. Absolutely. And if you killed off a bunch of drones and they didn't remake them, then they would just be slowed down overall. So this is a very common technique to try to punish Zerg players as you come in there and try to eliminate workers so that while you're building an army as the Protoss player, they're just trying to reform uh, their economy. Well, Serral is keeping on his path at least, right? He's got that Greater Spire started now. He's continuing his upgrades for his Zerglings and Banelings and as well as those Hydras. His army is, I mean, it's pretty good, but Stats is moving out before that Broodlord tech comes into play. Pretty even in supply, and with the Broodlord tech actually as far away as you were saying, Artosis, I'm worried that there might be an opportunity here to punish, but Cyril does come with a little counterattack here. Can he get the mm -hmm. denial on this Nexus? If he could, that would be huge, but Stats is ready. Ooh, is he ready for these banelings with speed? Okay, nice handling right there by Stats, but Cyril, of course, setting out another little counterattack. Banelings headed certainly towards one of his expansions. The name of the game for Cyril is to try to buy time, and with this counterattack, is Stats going to notice he's evacuating these probes, and they do not connect. Mm, those Banelings, they don't get as much damage as he was really looking for. That's okay, though. It's not the biggest investment. But that Greater Spire, it is on the way. It's going to finish up. Five Corruptors ready. Five Broodlords would change the course of the upcoming battle. That's absolutely right. We see those Broodlords coming up here. Now, one way to play against the Broodlords, you can do it a little bit uh, like you would against Swarmo. Sometimes you just avoid actually engaging them mm. and try to attack them elsewhere. Broodlords are not fast units. In fact, they're frankly quite slow. Yeah. So that's one way that you can try to exploit a player who is going for that kind of tech. Well, just look at this. Serral is keeping stats so busy with these lings, with these banes. Serral doesn't really care how much damage they do as long as it slows down the attack and buys time for these Broodlords. And that is exactly what it's done. Broodlords are out right now and stats does not have a strong counter to them. Okay, with these Broodlords out, I'm not sure how you know, uh, stats can really address this. Mm. We do see a fleet beacon being made, but of course, getting into that tech, that's going to be a little while, Artosis. Yeah, he might have to go into Tempest or something like that, which is not the way that a Protoss wants to play. You want to get into mass carriers, 
but you know you have to do what you can do to make sure the Broodlords do not punish you for your lack of tech. Oh, and we might have a big counterattack here. We mm. see an Enforce coming down here over in the center right. These Hydras are doing a lot of damage. These Archons are not going to be enough. Meanwhile, Stats is going to try to push Ooh. into the heart of Cyril's base. Oh, Cyril with such good positioning on those Broodlords. The Archons cannot reach them when they're over that terrain. In the meantime, the Ling Bane Hydra moving in, eradicating these Zealots, going after these Archons as well. The recall goes back to try to defend, and Cyril immediately evacuates. Cyril doing a brilliant job of controlling where Stats is on the map. Oh, is it time for Cyril to push yet, or is he going to fall back defensively with these Broodlords? That's the question to answer right now. It looks like the Broodlords are going back for the time being, and that will give Stats time to get out his Tempest. One thing to note, though, is the way that Cyril's played this, he doesn't have a lot of expansions. You basically halt developing on the map to try to get this tech out here, and Stats is really sitting on a pretty good economy. Yeah, he definitely has a lot of bases right now. The Banelings didn't do that much damage to his economy. He's got a lot of High Templars. He's got harassment going out on the map, and now he has Tempest. Stats has gotten himself into a sweet position. Okay, the War Prism, is it going to be taken out? That's actually pretty big. Takes that out. The War Prism is basically used in this situation to try to draw attention, pull Cyril's screen somewhere else, and then mm -hmm. you'll have another attack hit elsewhere. I mean, you have to have such high AP APM in this game, but you really actually can't be everywhere at once. We no. see a lot of top players exploit that. So losing that War Prism, this puts Stats in an awkward spot. Yeah, you know, he does want another one out there to harass at least, right? But at the moment, he's playing a very defensive game. He's making sure that this base is up and mining. He's getting another Nexus to go down. He needs to keep his economy at least close to what Serral has if he's to hold on in the long term. We're getting to the longest game that we've had so far. Stats is taking a fifth base at the bottom, but it looks like Serral is itching to try to come in here for some kind of counterattack. But so far, the movement here from Stats is looking pretty good. Yeah, he's moving right up. It looks like this Ling Bane Hydra shouldn't get too much done. Uh, yeah, some good storms going down. Stats holds tight Can we for get now. a shot on the bottom, actually? Is something hitting that Nexus? Okay, that's not, gonna, that's not <laughs> enough. So he's going to keep that Nexus for a little bit longer. But I got to say, Stats, I like that he's pulled back. He's, he's stayed off the mm -hmm. map. He's just continuing to grow. When he realized that those Broodlords were there, and again, you, it takes a long time to move Broodlords across the map. He just went back and started gobbling up resources all over the map. Well, right now, he's really just working on his air composition. Lots of Corruptors, lots of Broodlords. This is a scary combo, but if Stats continues to add in his big capital ships, you know, Tempest, maybe Carriers, he has Archons underneath to defend them from the Corruptors, as well as Psy Storms, he can battle toe-to-toe -to -toe against this. Okay, Stats is beginning to move out. And you got to be careful because these Tempest, when they hit you, I, dude, there's not a lot of ways to respond or, or, no. or punish it, right? He'll be one-shotting these Broodlords yes. momentarily. Yes. And now we're seeing such a high amount of Archons coming forward here. Oh, my God. That is a lot of Archons right now. 11 on the field with four Tempest upgrades going everywhere. There are a couple Vipers that have joined, so those definitely can change things if he doesn't get the feedbacks off right away. Okay, another uh, tag there with that Oracle. Now, he's actually hit the Broodlords. This is going to be very annoying for Cyril. As you can mm. see, the Tempest can then fire into this location, and there's no real way for Cyril to retaliate unless he tries to dive on top of this army. Oh, and it looked like for a moment that he might. The Queen's coming forward, getting feedbacked, but Stats being very careful here. If either side loses their army, that is going to be terrible. They'll lose additional bases while they try to reinforce, and it's going to be very hard at that point to win the game. So we're getting into super late game, and you can see, actually, with Cyril, he's banked up a lot of minerals and a lot of gas, and the same is true for stats, although Cyril is slightly ahead. But when we have a huge engage and the armies finally collide, we want to see what mm. they remake and how much they can actually remax out on. Well, right now, some baneling harassment continuing. Gets a decent amount of probes there. Ooh, the Hydra Bane. Uh, actually going towards that base and forcing a recall. That's actually kind of nice. You know, the recall has a long cooldown, so to force that, you now know the capabilities of Protoss on the next time they can do it. Okay, another attack over here. It looks like he's trying to find an opening, and he's going to be able to take out this Nexus. We don't see much to respond mm. here with, but he immediately cancels. He decides to back off. I yeah. think realizing, wait a minute, <gasps> there's nothing over here. He I'm actually surprised Cyril's being very cautious in this yes. game, Artosis. Well, he really wants to finish this. He's yeah. great at late game Zerg. And this is a very scary Protoss army. Now Stats getting over on creep. That can be dangerous. He's pushing forward, clearing out some of this creep. And Cyril is actually abandoning the area. 
Okay, Stats is pushing forward here, and Cyril is actually pulling away. He might sack this uh, expansion. We're seeing Cyril play such a cautious mm -hmm. game. He knows if there's one big fight that goes wrong on either side, the player's gonna lose. So if he's not totally confident, he'll give up that spot and expand elsewhere. Well, at least he's got some good counterattacks going down here as well, spreading out his Hydras. The size storms come down, but a lot of probes falling here for Stats. Okay, Stats is gonna back up. He's cleaned up. He's cleaned up that side of the map. Very nicely done here by Cyril. Uh, this expansion is gonna go down, although this is not the most valuable expansion on the map. You can see that most yeah. of the minerals were already uh, mined out. Well, he cloaks it, so I guess it's gonna okay. live. <laughs> the carrier's <laughs> coming out. He will be able to push these Hydras back. So nice save there. In the meantime, Cyril did lose two bases. <gasps> okay, Ooh, this Vipers. could be bad. Uh -oh. He gets it. Oh, a beautiful abduct onto the mothership, and he picks it off for free. Unreal. Yeah, that was out there, exposed. So he comes in there, wipes that out, and Cyril immediately scurries back. He's also expanding to the upper right. But Stats is almost starting to look like he's the Zerg in this game, Artosis. Mm. He has so many bases, hugging every corner here at the bottom. He does, and his composition continues to get better. You know, he's adding a lot of carriers, continuing those upgrades, remaking that mothership as well. And with this many Archons and Psy Storms, it's hard for any Zerg to break through. Okay, he's going for it. He's Whoa. harpooning those carriers in here and taking them out. And it seems like Stats has decided he should take his fight elsewhere. Oh my God, beautiful execution here from Cyril, picking off so many Archons as well as some of these capital ships. And now it's it, Stats giving up bases. I think that Cyril can actually come over here and take this base out in the center right, correct? I mean, there's nothing over mm -hmm. there. A good little counterattack here by Stats, doing a lot with a little, but meanwhile, Whoa. a counter here from Stats, hitting this base on the far left. Well, now this is how you abuse those Broodlords. They're very slow, hard for them to go defend. In the meantime, Zealots chasing those drones. Oh my god, the Corruptor's even getting in on the fight. Cyril gonna take down another Nexus. Okay, can we go big picture here? Let's, let's check how many minerals are at each base here. Um, let's start with uh, the Protoss here. Okay, so that has plenty. He'll be mining from that for a while. Uh, yep, there's no, <laughs> no next. <nexus> <laughs> but, but down here in the bottom left, okay, this has basically been untouched, so it's more like he has mm. that position. Plenty of minerals over here, and does he have anything more? So that's going to dry up pretty mm -hmm. quickly, and that... I mean, that's not gonna last you know, too much they longer. keep playing whack-a-mole with these expansions, so it's hard to say how that's going to go. But Cyril does have a bigger bank uh, than oh. Stats. Oh, my God. Cyril just jumping on top of absolutely everything, picking up one carrier. Another carrier goes down. It looks like he's going to maybe get all of them. He's decided to commit. He's coming in here now, and I'm seeing these air units for Stats begin to go down. The mothership taking heavy fire, and this whole location is going to be given up here by Stats. We now have 194 supply to 141, and there's not a lot of gas in the bank here for Stats. No, this is going to be really hard to come back from now for our Korean Protoss player. He's lost a huge amount of his air army. More Corruptors on the way as well. He's running back to defend his home base against this ground counterattack, and Stats has to be careful. Any unit he loses will not be replaced. It's interesting to see that the center right and the center left of the map, both players have just given up on. They don't want to mess with that side of the map because both of them are having a hard time controlling it. Uh, we do see stats here in the bottom left with a very mineral-rich expansion. Mm. He hasn't gotten all of his workers over there, but as this game goes on for a long time, that's going to be important. And the same can be said over here for Cyril in the upper right. That base that he's taken over there, going to be very important. The question right now becomes, how does stats keep Cyril busy? Because Cyril's army absolutely can kill stats. But if he overcommits into an area, stats can hit a lot of different places at once. You see him walking around with different groups of units. Here goes a group of zealots up to this base. Can he pick that one off? Okay, he's going for these drones. The drones will have to be pulled away. If he can get the hatchery, that would be ideal. Meanwhile, oh. we've got a huge attack headed down here to the bottom left, and stats needs to keep this position. Oh, a lot of banelings rolling in right now. Stats, most of his mining is here. Probe starting to fall. They're trying to run away. Oh, a beautiful baneling hit. And it looks like that Nexus is going to go down. And with that Nexus gone, there's just not much else that Stats can do in the economy game. I love how Cyril then escapes, heading north with the rest of his air army. Oh, my God. These banes oh. are going to come in here and start hitting these workers. He kills quite a few there once again. Stats just down to 30 probes. Look at that. Even brewing banelings now. Cyril is just incredible this game. Cyril, interestingly enough, is actually now expanding towards the bottom left. 
He wants to have this game be all about mm. this corner of the map. This way he can attack the bottom left and also kind of defend the left center. Yeah, it's it's a good strategy. Look at this. He keeps flying in here with this uh, Corruptor Swarm. He's looking for that damage. The Lings, they counterattack into the bottom left. Stats can't keep it alive. His army is not big enough right now to defend every location. I'm wondering if Stats needs to try to then expand over to the, to the center right. Does he just give up this spot? Because it seems like Cyril's really grown into this area. And keep in mind also with Stats making like carriers mm -hmm. and Tempest, every time you lose that, it takes a long time to remake it. So yeah. every win that Cyril has gives him a lot of time to capitalize his position on the map. Well, right now, Stats does have a decent air army once again, but I'm getting nervous for him because he needs Archons under it. He needs High Templars under it. So right now, his singular focus is to rebuild his high tech units so he can have a great engagement against Cyril. I guess the only other location that Stats could try to take is the one just, uh, we can move the screen down just slightly. There's actually a base there. Um, and he looks like he could try to maybe expand there. Now, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the game plan is for Stats. It seems like he really has to wait and just keep trying to build up yeah. as Cyril is becoming so rich, especially with minerals and gas. He needs a really strong army to be able to take out Cyril. And here Cyril comes. This could be a game-ending engagement. No, he sends him back. But a beautiful abduct picks off a carrier that's so expensive yeah. for Stats to remake. I love how he harpoons that, picks it off, and then flies away. And you can see in the production tab in the upper left, the carriers take a long time to make. Mm -hmm. He is making them with every mineral that he can afford right now. Stats just going towards that elusive 200 supply. It's been a while since he's had an army that can actually fight to -to toe, but Cyril slowly, methodically trying to tear Stats apart here. Well, Cyril doesn't have to do anything right away. If he sees an opening, he probably will act on it. But Stats is trying to build back up. Mm. And because he's so low on minerals and gas, and by the way, this is very similar to the game we saw Cyril beat Rogan, where Cyril seems to have such a complicated understanding of how super late game goes, he knows how to trade efficiently all the way throughout. Mm. Now, oh my god, the Broodlord's actually going for an attack right now. They're going to be able to pick off a huge amount of ground units. All the rest of the Immortals and the Archons over there should fall. Now, with these Broodlords coming in, this expansion is so important here for Stats. Stats cannot afford to lose this. He's not going to have any more minerals to mine from if he does. Oh, I think this is going to for force a fight right now. Stats flying over with his Golden Armada. He doesn't save the Nexus, but in the meantime, some harassment with a few Zealots that Stats has left. It does appear that Cyril should be able to clean the rest of this up, but it's just Stats here with this one base at the bottom center. Not a lot of minerals at that. Oh, his stats, this is really his last outpost right now. He has to keep it alive. Cyril coming in from a flank. There are a side storms under here. There are Archons under here. But some Aducts come out and instantly picking off two of the Tempest. I really do feel like the walls are starting to close in here for stats. You can see he's, he's slowed down to a crawl here as he's trying to get out of the map. And Cyril is basically staying back and looking for a moment to engage. He goes in there, he kills off a carrier, uh, maybe an Archon, and then he flies away. And with the minerals and gas banked up, let's say that they have a huge fight and almost both, uh, almost all of their armies are wiped out. Mm -hmm. Cyril's going to be the guy that can remake everything. Stats is not. It's very true. Stats needs to win a decisive fight against this army and then another decisive fight against the army he refills with. At that point, he has a real chance to take this game. Some more warp ins coming from Stats. Once you get this kind of an army, you're kind of stuck going for it. We see the Broodlords coming in. It's actually kind of insane how much damage he's done with these Broodlords. Some more Broodlings coming in here right now, doing some damage. And again, another snipe on the carrier. A huge snipe right there. Every unit is so hard for him to remake here. He's buying Zots at this point. That's not what you want with this main army. But stats still keeping the hope alive. Carriers can be so efficient. Cyril with a little counterattack over here, trying to do more than stats can deal with. And actually, that's going to get in another nuisance there. It seems like Stats is, is debating, sh what, should he take a fight? Should he try to hit the center left location? Meanwhile, Cyril's already expanding to the top right. Oh, man, these Zerglings doing a lot over there as well, forcing him to warp in Zolots that, again, he cannot afford. But Stats is mining. He's trying to push back some of this creep and hopefully look for that good engagement.
Okay, Stats is gonna go in the middle of the map. He's looking for a fight, and I think he's gonna get it. We see these Broodlords now Ooh. being hit. Some good dodging on those Psionic Storms from Cyril. Is Cyril gonna try to come in here and fight this? Really great micro here by Stats. Look at him rotate those High Templars around, getting those important Psy Storms down on the Corruptors. That's what he's really afraid of. But with these links coming in, he can take out the rest of these workers. Again, Stats is so low on economy, he needs to protect this expansion. Okay, it kills 10 of his workers but in the meantime, he is counterattacking. Looks like he might be able to take out this base. Will Serral go for a big fight? He's actually, oh, picks off that mothership. Beautiful snipe on the mothership. It's gonna be a lot easier for Serral to engage when he decides it's that moment. These carriers have such damage output, you can really see. But look at that, every time an abduct goes off, he kills another carrier, two more fall. The Broodlord's starting to get picked off here as well, though. He comes in once more, he can basically one-shot these carriers, and I don't think oh. there's any solution here for Stats. He's gonna commit Cyril overwhelming the air fleet of Stats. And that is it, G -G. G -G. WCS titles. Next up was GSL versus the world, and today, not only are you a WCS global champion, you are the best player in the world! <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what to say. Yeah, I mean, when I came here, I wasn't really expecting to win, but at the same time, it was my goal, so yeah, feels incredible. This, this goes beyond you becoming the best of the best. Your legacy goes beyond StarCraft II. It goes to all of StarCraft history. In the last 20 years, we have never seen a non-Korean dominate in the fashion that you have and become the best of the best like you have. What does it mean for you to be part of this historic moment? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't expecting. I know, I mean, it's just, this is kind of what I was missing from my trophy collection, I guess you could say, and I really wanted to win this one, so I'm super happy I managed to do it, and I'm super happy to make history at, uh, while doing it as well. Starting from Leipzig of this year, all the way here to Anaheim, you have so many fans all around the world that have been rooting for you. What do you have to say to them? First off, I want to thank all my fans. I always... I think, I think every one of you has helped me to make me achieve what I've achieved. So I really want to thank everyone. And also, I want to give a, a big thank you to Lambo. He, he helped me for each series, to, for preparations. And also my practice partners for Dark and Rogue, who were Elaser and Numster. So I want to thank, thank all of those. And there you have it. Your 2018 WCS Global Champion is It's an unparalleled achievement across all of StarCraft II. Nevertheless, eSports as Serral etches himself in history. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. And what 
a victory. What a moment we have witnessed here today around the world. Everybody here in the crowd as well. Joining me, Pig in control, Rotterdam. I've kind of lost for words. <laughs> I think we all are. You know, we've just experienced a special moment. We've seen his determination build himself up. This took years of dedication and practice. This didn't happen overnight. We've seen him grinding those tournaments since he was about 14 years old. Here he is many years later, and he is the undisputed best player in the world. It makes, it makes a massive difference. I think it's not only a huge achievement for Special, it sort of resonates through all of us as StarCraft fans, as StarCraft players. Throughout all of these years, Rotterdam overall, we've seen Serral has now managed to be able to crown himself a world champion and the best player in the world. He's done it. I mean, the, the king has done it, as they like to call him in Europe. It's unreal, and he's done it in his own special way as well. He didn't follow the traditional path of going somewhere and living in a team house. No, he's done it by himself, growing up in Finland. I mean, the story is magical. That final was an amazing roller coaster of emotions. At first, it looked a little too easy, and then it almost became a yeah. little too hard. <laughs> it's amazing. I don't, I don't know what to say. Jeff? Uh, it's going to be hard for me to talk about. It's very emotional, but like, I, I actually disagree with what Kevin said. He didn't do it himself. He has a loving, supportive family, which is shown in the videos, which is amazing. His father raised him to be a StarCraft player. He said, respect all of your opponents, always GG. Respect that they can beat you, and he has done it the right way. He thanked yeah. his training partners. He represents everything about StarCraft that I freaking love, and that's that if you put in the work, you have the talent, and, and you just you take those losses and you make it into a learning experience, you can become something bigger than what people ever tell you is possible. Did, did we ever think a guy from Finland would, would win the world championship? Did we ever think that a non-Korean would topple 20 years of dominance of some of the best gameplay we've ever seen in our lives and the hardest game on Earth? No. But in 2018, it happened. And it happened for all the right reasons. And it happened to a great guy that the entire time has never had much to say, but he loves playing StarCraft and he did it the right way. It's, it's amazing. I'll tell you something. He is going to be here for a long time signing autographs. <laughs> if we've got anything to look at them for this. And it's, it happens at such a momentous occasion here at BlizzCon Pig, looking at how Serral has been able to do it. And up until the finals for Serral, it looked easy. And the finals was the one that tested him. The finals was the one that tried his metal. And in the end, he was victorious. Yeah, he didn't shake under pressure. He really just swept the opposition aside until that grand finals where Sats did take him to the limit. It's incredible because he really sets his own standards. He doesn't play to the level of his opponents. He plays to his own absolutely ridiculous standards of what a perfect StarCraft game should look like. And we see it there, just late game like we've never seen before. The way he uses those units, it's like he's playing a completely different game to the one that we're playing. And this. This is uh, like the Matrix, man. Like this flips the whole story on its head. Like that's it for this year, and that's amazing. But what does next year look like? It, it, does he keep winning? Is that I mean? Because at this tournament, yeah, he tripped up in the finals. But even then, it felt like it was him not playing to his gold standard sure, to yeah, allow yeah. stats to do that. Next year, does he just keep winning and do the Koreans? Does Dark finally start to say, okay, <laughs> maybe we do have to look to Serral as the guy we need to take the crown back from? Yeah. This next year of StarCraft, with this game building up, we had amazing viewership. This place was standing room only. Mike Moreheim in the crowd, proud of this game that he's helped build. I, like, the future is beautiful, and I, I'm so excited for next year. I can't right. wait. Yeah, winning is one thing, but winning the way that Serral did, I think, throughout this weekend is just unbelievable. We often see people win a tournament, but we're like, ah, maybe in that phase in the game, he's still vulnerable. He looks like such a complete player. He truly looks like he's comfortable in every phase of the game, in all matchups, with all unit compositions. It's bizarre to watch something like this because everyone is supposed to have weaknesses in StarCraft 2. I don't know if Serral has them, but he's definitely not showing us any. It's, it's unreal, James. No, definitely not. Final thoughts, gentlemen, before we wrap things up. Big, I'm going to start with you. StarCraft history. That's it. That's it. We've been talking about <laughs> it for so many years. It's finally happened. So. Uh, it's just been a pleasure up here watching it. I think all of us feel like we've just witnessed something great. I think everyone in the yeah. venue, you can feel the energy. It's, I mean, we always have a great energy at BlizzCon, but this year you can feel waves of excitement coming from everybody here in the venue. So it's just so special to be a part of this. Jeff? I echo Pig's sentiments. I'm just so proud. I, I, I've loved casting with my best friends in the whole world. The production is amazing. We got the result that we've been talking about for a long time. and. You know, in StarCraft, fairy tales don't always come true, but sometimes they do. And when you're when you actually get to sit there and have the best seat in the house for it, it's 
I'm going to be walking on Cloud9 for a while here, knowing that anything is possible in StarCraft. And that's something that Serral made us believe. A truly beautiful weekend. Phenomenal ending. Long live our new king. And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. Serral has crowned himself the world champion for Serral, for Finland, for the Western world, for every facet of StarCraft II. Serral has crowned himself the world champion. It's an amazing thought. It's an amazing feeling as he marches on here as the best player in the world. A huge thank you to everybody for tuning in here throughout the entirety of our two weeks, from opening week until the brackets as well. You better watch out 2019, because Serral's coming for you.